Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about regression tests. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, why do developers suck at regression testing? I think that's an excellent question. And it is a very valid one because developers do suck at regression testing. To be fair though, I will say that practically everybody except for maybe QAs suck at regression testing. Everybody I know sucks at regression testing. It's practically impossible to do, especially when it is in a product that is uh, of a certain level of complexity. The best part about it, so this is the thing that they, they don't tell you about creating models and polymorphism and if statements and conditions and all that good stuff. Well, you know what they don't tell you? They don't tell you that whenever your stakeholder comes in and says, you know what, we need to create a special case for this customer here. They don't tell you that that's going to suck for the rest of the time that you are maintaining that system. Because it's just a small thing, right? Well. Yeah, yes and no, because now you've created a fork in the logic, which means that you now have to tw test twice as much. And I know, I know that we say that we're going to do unit testing, and I know that we say that we're going to write uh, automation and end-to-end -end tests and all of this good stuff, which is what we are supposed to be doing. But uh, very few companies do actually understand that in order for you to have a level, a certain level of quality on your at your uh, on your system, you have to invest in these things, and it's much cheaper short term to have manual regression testing and ideally you should have the, the developers do that as well because if they do it you don't have to pay a QA and so uh, the reason why they suck at regression testing is because it is it is hard it is really really hard to remember that any change that you make literally any change you make could have broken an existing feature and now you have to remember all the features you have in the system and manually go through and test them and this sucks for everybody involved it's boring it's time consuming it's hard to, to be one part is also because that most people don't actually want to do it and so when you do this in a manual fashion it's so error prone that you will miss things. Just the other day, actually, I ha we had a um, fairly severe regression that was so obvious that it was almost painful. Basically what had happened was that we had shipped the feature that changed the entire UI for a handful of specific products that we were dealing with. Now, a very, very um, annoyed junior developer pointed out um, very boldly, I would have to say, stated to us that, well, this is so obvious. Why didn't you fix this? Why didn't you find this? I mean, are you just deploying things without regression testing? And I just very, very calmly, without try without strangling this individual, I reach, I almost reached through my computer, grabbed her by the neck, and squeezed. But I tried to resist, and since I don't think I can physically do it, it didn't work. So, so I'm still not a murderer. And then I very calmly tried to explain, yes, of course. Of course we tested it. I tested it. My coworkers tested it. The PO tested it. The designer who designed the thing tested it. We tested all of us. And the one thing that we all forgot to do was to go and check that all the other stuff that we have already built was still working because everybody tested the thing that we had built and nobody really remembered to regression test the rest of the system. This is one of the reasons why you usually have automated end-to-end -end tests or some type of automated checks in place to make sure that the thing that you built is actually still working or you have a QA type of person or you have some person who is dis who is dedicated to doing exactly that thing to check that everything is still working. And then you have other systems that you can use. You can use canary releases, which is not feasible for the specific case, but you could do it. There are so many things that you could do to make this not a problem that does not involve that you just have to remember how everything works. And I mean, the, sh the cheap way, like, which is, it's the, um, it's the poor man's uh, automated test, which, which is the thing that I'm very, very sorry to say it has become the only thing that I personally can fall back on 
practically all the time in every company because it's actually this it is usually very difficult to get a company to buy into proper end-to-end -end test it takes time uh, is to have a checklist that is literally the only thing that I've ever used that apart from actually doing the thing that we're supposed to be doing which is as I said not an easy sell it, it is to whatever you set whenever you release something you have to have a checklist oh these are all the things that have broken before go and check them manually each and every one of them which of course especially when you have a lot of permutations and in an international product creates hours of fun because it can literally take hours I remember at a previous job uh, the product was live. It, it was live in 50 or 54 markets in Europe, or something like that. I think globally. We literally spent, and I'm not joking now, two weeks per release in manual regression testing. That's how long it took. For two weeks, they said we we just. Yes, you went through this massive list because nobody had a, we hadn't invested in automation and these are the sorts of things that I keep telling people that if you want to be Google if you want to be Facebook you have to do this this is the thing that they do much better than anybody else because the it is a really really unsustainable tactic to have the idea that we just have to ask more from our developers because the fact of the matter is that when you are working on a system, it's re you, you are in a certain mind space. You are focusing on getting the thing that you are building right. And it's almost impossible to ask that same person then to remember that, oh, well, now that you did this thing, think about the rest of the system. Think about every single thing that could possibly have gone wrong with the thing that you just did and make sure that that didn't happen. That's why we have unit tests. That's why we have integration tests and all of this sort of stuff. And the, the, like this is the safety net that we, that we all have to invest in. But the problem is, it's not just about one single developer doing this thing. It is about a community. It is about a company-wide commitment to that thing. Because the really shitty part about all of this is that if you can't commit to doing this, it's actually really it's actually a big it's a big it's a benefit to the company but to you as an individual developer it's actually not because the problem is that you're always in this position where if you take too long and testing takes longer especially if you're the only one who's doing it that's going to show in your performance and if you're dealing with stakeholders who, who can't actually understand that you are a qualitative a qualitative developer who is trying to write tests and do the right thing they are just going to view you as someone who is less performant as, than the rest of the, the rest of the uh, company and here's the devil's part like here is the really evil part about all of this if the, the system becomes unreliable if it becomes uh, unstable or full of bugs and so forth unless the thing is uh, unless the bugs are very very clearly connected to the stuff that you just did it's actually almost impossible for you to get to a situation as an individual developer where people point the finger at you and say you are responsible for all of these bugs they just view the system as the problem or the company as the problem or the team as the problem further reducing your incentive to do the right thing because you have a lot of incentive to ship really really fast because that's the thing that most people care about and if things go wrong well it's very rare that you're gonna get blamed personally for it so in one scenario you're gonna get blamed personally because you didn't ship fast enough and in the other case it's just gonna be everybody's problem that is a really really tough thing to battle and it's something that you have to battle at a company level so what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why developers suck at regression testing is because it's boring it takes a lot of time. It's practically impossible for you to hold, especially if you're dealing with a big system, to remember all of the features within the system. So unless you are automating things, unless you are investing heavily in test-driven development or unit testing or something like that, integration tests and end-to-end -end tests, if you're, not, if you're not really committing to that sort of thing, you're going to have bugs. Things are going to slip through because manual testing is a very error-prone process, especially when you have many permutations. I've worked on projects, as I said, where the testing, the, the, the manual testing process was literally two weeks long because the, uh, we could not ship faster because there were so many features and so many permutations and configurations that could potentially break. And if you don't want that, 
you have to check it. And if you don't automate it, that's going to take a lot of hours. And the only tip I can give you is that either you have to get your stakeholders to understand that the only sustainable way to do this well is to automate it, then the only other option you have is to create a checklist, just a manual checklist where you just, okay, I need, and practically always, I would, in my experience, you practically always, regardless of what you do, have to go through it. Because the problem is that the second you get into this habit where you select, well, I did just that thing, and that shouldn't break anything, and that shouldn't break anything. You get into this selective mode, it you very quickly become very lazy, and you start thinking about whether or not this actually is actually going to break. And here's another kicker for you: if you're working in a distributed system with multiple teams, technically any team can at pro practically at any moment break something for you. So even if you didn't do anything, the system may have changed underneath you, and your feature might still be broken. This is why this is very error prone, and this is why developers really, really suck at this thing. And I also go in for, as far as to say, everybody sucks at regression testing. Even the people who are paid to do this suck at it. Have a great day.